Kevin Luscombe and uh, happily I retired a couple of years ago from commercial life. I'm involved in two or three not-for-profit boards to keep my brain alive and uh, doing my very best as a consumer to help the food and wine industry when they're able to serve us. Well, I've been in the food industry, believe it or not, for 70 years. Scary. Um, started out, took a temporary job with Heinz and ended up staying there for 20 odd years here and in the United States and Southeast Asia and, and that got me into understanding the hospitality industry, particularly in the US where they are one of the biggest players in the food service industry. And then uh, food and wine attracted me for other reasons and um, about 30 years ago I created or we created a little vineyard down at Red Hill so I could get deeply involved in wine and enjoyed that for 13 or 14 years until um, it got more hard work than I wanted, but very enjoyable with a, a good friend Gary Crittenden as the uh, advisor and winemaker, legend of food and wine. And uh, then I got involved in a number of wine companies on advisory boards and ended up um, being lured into the food and wine Victoria, which was then simply Melbourne Food and Wine Festival. Firstly, to do some interviewing for uh, an appointment of a creative director. One of the applicants was Matt Preston. And if you want an easier decision to make in a, an appointment job, that was it. It was all over the, in five minutes. Uh, and then 14, no, 16 years ago, I think, I came onto the board of Food and Wine Victoria's deputy to John Haddon. Well, I think it's part of, we talk about culture in Victoria, but in a curious way, food and wine is part of that culture. Um, and I think right now we're seeing the evidence of why food and wine has been so important in Victoria. Would, often when you don't, you don't appreciate things until they're taken away from you. And now I think we're understanding how important it was. And I, I believe that if you go back to the birth of the Food and Wine Festival, it was a situation not as drastic as this, but Victoria was, was in a dull mood after losing the Olympics bid and Peter Cleminger decided the food and wine would be the way to get the city to come alive and, and that's where it began. And, and I think it allows people, it doesn't have boundaries, doesn't have barriers, people can find their points of value, uh, they can involve their friends, their family, and it's, 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 it's a very warm, wonderful, joyful experience actually. Oh, it's not that difficult because there's always something new. It's not an industry that stands still. And if you travel a lot, as most of us like to do, you're always discovering new places with new food and you want to get back and see whether Victoria does it better. Or, um, and I mean, we're, we're, we are definitely the, the multicultural and multi-culinary heart of Australia. And it's just extraordinary. The, when, when you come to put the festival together and you realise how many countries, how many types of food you're going to be dealing with, it's, it's, it's very uplifting. Oh, it, it's, a, it's a cliche, but, but the truth is it's, it's really involving people in the best possible mood and enjoyment. Um, the, what I, what I really like about it is it never stands still. It, 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 it demands that you are staying ahead of the game. Um, you've got, in many ways, restaurants got people in their own home, their home being the restaurant. And uh, whether that's a pub in the country or whether it's a high f fine dining, there's a sense of I'm, I'm being invited here, even though I'm paying. Uh, and, and if hospitality doesn't recognize the relationship between the staff, the ambience of the place and the people, they're never, they're never going to succeed. The great restaurants of the world aren't just great food places and not great places for wonderful architecture. They're places where people genuinely get involved with the people serving them. And you'll understand how strong it is when they start to say, 
and genuinely mean it, could you please tell the chef how much I enjoyed that dish? I think we're seeing a lot of very good examples of, of how problems always make you seek opportunities that, that will take you to a new level. And I don't just mean the takeaway, which was the first obvious step, but there's a lot of innovation going on the way, the way, the way that's handled. You look at the providoring thing that Shane and his other colleagues in Melbourne are doing with you know, bringing food that's partially prepared. You have to play chef at home with it. And uh, you, you see, you see um, the passion in these people to want to do something. Now, a cynic would say, well, they're doing it because they've got to survive, and that's a reality. And, and the sad truth is a lot of them won't. But uh, we'll come out of it with, with new and different ways to do things. Uh, I think it was... Um, I think it was John Lethleen that wrote a piece recently that resonated with me when he simply made the point that we're learning that dining out isn't just about the food and, and, and I think that's what we're all getting our heads around. You can't, I mean, there's no replacement. I, I can get the best meal delivered to the door here, but it's not quite the same. It'll never be the same. Thank God I can get it, but it's not the answer. So we're learning how important the interrelationship is in the hospitality industry. Oh, far be it for me to give advice, but, but I, I really do hope that they don't think that what they're doing now is going to be the way it will be afterwards. Uh, there's an evolving change here, and those that were probably smartest in to understand preparation of food for home are going to be the ones that understand how they may reconfigure some of their offerings coming forward that will uh, allow people to, well, it'll, it'll be, be relatively easy when the green light goes on again, whenever that is, because people want it. So don't fool yourself that, wow, we're back where we were. You still have to compete and you still have to send people away thinking that was a really good night out or lunch or and I got great value and I loved it and I want to go back. They'll have to earn it again, but in different ways. Serves them right. Um, no, I'm very gratified. Uh, I look at the names of the people on there and I wonder why I'm, I'm part of it, but um, thank you is about all I can say. And uh, if legends are supposed to do something, that worries me. I, don't, I hope it doesn't mean I have to take everybody to lunch to celebrate, but I know where I want to go, so that'll be fine. Um, just take a second to to say how much I think everybody in the industry uh, wants to say to their colleagues in the industry how tough it's been. And I'd like to think, hope I'm right, that, that Melbourne will appreciate it, that Melbourne does get it, that they're doing it tough and welcoming all the efforts they're doing and, and, and when it's over, they'll all be legends.